Hi guys, welcome to the 10th episode of Eat the Blocks. I am Julian, your host, and today we're going to study the Remix IDE, which is an IDE for Solidity. So, so far in terms of development environment, we've mainly used the command line and Truffle, which is a very good framework for developing Solidity smart contract. However, um, you might have noticed it seems a little bit heavy to kind of uh, debug and interact with our contract, even though the Truffle uh, develop console is really good. Um, but it'd be good to have a sort of tool that allows us to do this in a more uh, fluid way where we can uh, go back and forth really quickly. And actually, there is really good tool that is the one that I'm going to talk about in this episode, which is the Remix IDE. So it's basically a web-based tool, which means uh, you can use your web browser to access it. Um, and it allows us to uh, do a, a lot of try and, and uh, like going back and forth and inspect the variable of our contract and, and just interact with our smart contract in a really easy way. So I didn't want to show you this at the, the beginning of all my videos because First, I wanted to show you the hard way, but now that you know the hard way, then we'll, we'll be able to uh, also see the easy way. And from now on, when I show you example on video, we will be able to make use of this tool. So open your web browser and load the URL remix.ethereum.org. So this is the online version of the Remix ID. So it's very easy for us to use. So you will notice that there are several zone in this editor so first on the left where i click you have the file editor so they already created a contract for you so ballot.sol so we're going to double click and we can see that it opens up in the central section so the central section is here is where you're going to spend most of your time actually coding so actually few people know but we can zoom in a little bit because it's a little bit small. So we're going to zoom in. Okay, it's going to be a little bit more clear like this. So there are different actions that you can perform in the file explorer part. And the most important one is the ability to create a new contract. So here you can click on the plus button and you can create a new 3DT contract. So for example, we will call it my contract. Okay. And here it appear in the file explorer and you can see that it has opened up a new tab. So I can switch back and forth between different open contract exactly like in a normal text editor. Okay, so we're going to write a very simple contract and learn how to deploy it on the local testnet. So contract, we're going to call it my contract. We open the curly braces. And here you can notice that Remix automatically creates the closing curly braces for us. It's, it's very convenient. And then we're going to create our constructor. So my contract. Um, and we're going to um, just set a local variable, uh, the owner of this contract, for example. So owner equal owner we're going to pass this as an argument so it's going to be an address owner with an underscore and we're going to define our variable before so it's going to be type address and this is an owner okay so we have a very simple contract that just set a variable when it's created so now we're going to have a look at the right part of the screen. So there are different tab, compile, run, settings, etc. So the first type, uh, tab, compile, here you have a button which says start to compile. So every time you click on it, it will recompile your contract. So here I've ticked the box auto compile, so I don't need to click on start compile every time. And if you look a little bit below this, uh, you will find that the Remix IDE gives you some uh, recommendation. So uh, some of them are just warning, like here, warning, no visibility specified. 
defaulting to public. So it's basically some little tip to help you to improve your contract. So you can just get rid of them like this or just ignore them. Uh, and you can also see uh, in the code section of the IDE that uh, on uh, left of the line number, you have a little icon that tells you that there is a warning. Um, if we have an error, I, uh, actually we'll have a little, um, not a warning, but an error. And here I can see that I have this uh, uh, cross that tells me there was a problem. And, and on the right panel, I can see the error message. So parser error expecting token semicolon got function. Okay, so I can go back to the code section and put back my semicolon and I can see that my error message disappeared, but I still have my warning. Okay, so I'm just going to ignore this warning and I'm going to open up the run tab. So the run tabs allow you to deploy your contract to your local test net. So first you need to choose uh, what is where you're going to deploy this contract because there are different possibilities. So the option that is selected here is the JavaScript VM is the easiest option. It's basically a test net that is run by the Remix ID itself. So you don't need to manage it as well uh, at all. However, if you click on this drop down, you can see that you have different options. So second option is injected Web3. So for example, uh, if you were using Mist, uh, yeah, Mist the wallet of uh, Ethereum, uh, Actually, from Mist, you can launch an instance of Remix, and in this case, you would choose Injected Web3. Uh, also, if you uh, are testing uh, with MetaMask, you can uh, choose this option. And finally, we have a Web3 provider option. So here it would be, for example, if you want to connect to your local test net with a test RPC, for example. So for this video, we're just going to uh, keep to uh, JavaScript VM. It's very simple. Then uh, this local test net give you a list of account that you can use. So here you can see on the on the drop down you have several options. You can just stick to the first uh, uh, to the option that is already selected. Then the gas limit it's basically when you're going to uh, deploy this contract or launch some transaction, it's uh, going to apply this gas limit. So uh, if this limit is too small, you may you, you may run across the error um, run out of gas, but the default option is usually good, so just leave it like this. Then you have a, the a, a value field here. It's basically if you want to send some ether to this contract. Okay, so if we continue to go down, uh, we can see that we have another drop down, which is uh, my contract here. So since I have only one contract in this file, uh, I just show one uh, possible uh, one uh, uh, choice. But if I were to create another contract, for example contract my other contract then if i go back to the right panel now i see that i will have another choice which is my other contract but what we want to deploy is my contract so we're going to uh, click this then the next thing we're going to do is going to click here on the create button so let's do it okay and after you see that um we have this thing uh, here that just appear. So it's basically an instance of my contract that is deployed at uh, this address that you can copy like this. So if I click here, it has copied this address to the clipboard and I can use this address uh, somewhere else. And then I'm going to uh, open this sub menu here. Uh, and and actually I don't see anything because um, I just have my constructor function but uh, I don't have any uh, any other function that I can call, so uh, that's all I'm going to see. Um, if I continue to explore the Remix IDE uh, at the bottom of the screen, so it is where we're going to see the result of our, our transaction. So here we can see that uh, it says creation of my contract pending, and after we can see that it has actually done the transaction. Um, so it's uh, another uh, area that you can uh, keep a look at if you want to uh, get some feedback on, on what's going on. Okay, so let's add a function to our contract. So we're going to uh, basically, I want to uh, access this variable owner. So I will create a function that uh, give me access to this. So it's going to be function uh, get owner. And this function is going to return an address very simply. 
and it's going to be very simple. Okay. So now my contract has changed, so I need to redeploy it. So I go back to the right panel and I click on create. Okay, so I can get rid of the first instance by clicking on the cross here. I don't need it. And for this new instance, I see that uh, this time I have um, a, new, um, an, a, a new entry that I didn't have before, which is this get owner button. Uh, oops, so actually I forgot the constant keyword, uh, so I need to add this. Uh, so let me recreate the contract. Okay, and this time you can see that the color of the button has changed. So now it's a green button, which means that uh, we can call it uh, without actually doing a transaction. So let's click on this, uh, get owner, and he tells me that uh, the address is this. Um, okay, well, it's not exactly what I wanted. Uh, so, why is this? Oh, okay, I got it. It's because I was supposed to pass in the constructor uh, a variable, so I'm not going to do this. Basically, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to use the global variable message that I give you some information about uh, the transaction, and I want to access the sender field of this global variable. It's basically, uh, I'm going to say that uh, the person who created the transaction uh, will be the owner. Okay, so are we going to redeploy this contract? So here on the right panel, I, cr I click on the create button and uh, let me get rid of the old instance. Okay, and now if I click again on the get owner button, I should see the correct uh, address. So 0xCA35P and uh, let me see in my account if I can see this. Uh, D O X C A three. Yes. Okay. So we can see that it's giving me the the address that I was expecting. Okay. So now we know how to deploy our contract, and we also know how to interact with our contract thanks to a um, read-only function. So now let's do the last thing, which is to uh, actually execute a function that changes the state of uh, the, my contract. So here I'm going to say something else, for example, uh, set owner, uh, and it's going to accept an address. Uh, so address uh, new owner, uh, and it's not going to return anything. Uh, and owner equal set owner, okay. Uh, and it's, uh, oh no, oops, it's new owner. Okay, so now we're going to recreate a new instance of our contract. So let's click on the create button and let's get rid of the old instance here. And now we have two buttons, so one button to execute the read-only get owner function and another button to execute the function set owner that's going to modify our data in the contract storage. So let us change the owner. So let's see here in the account drop down uh, if we have other uh, account. Okay, so let's select the, f the second account. We're going to copy it and then I'm going to switch back to the first account because I still want to send the transaction uh, with the first account. And then in the uh, field of the set owner function here, I'm going to copy um, this account. And I here it's important. So when you give a value uh, to to the this function, you need to quote it. Otherwise, uh, Remix is going to complain. Okay. And now I'm going to click on set owner. Okay. And now I'm going to click on get owner to verify that uh, this transaction has worked. So I can see that the new owner is 1472. And here, if I checked, what did I send? 1472. So it's great. It's what we wanted. That's it for today. So now you know how to use the Remix IDE for basic functions. So there is still a lot to be learned for the Remix IDE. So in the next few videos, I'm going to continue to talk about it. So for the next video, I'm going to focus on the file explorer of Remix.
and little by little you will learn how to become more uh, and more knowledgeable about it. If you like this channel, you can give me a like, you can share the video or you can subscribe. Um, you can also uh, write a comment if you have any question. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you for the next video. Bye bye.